This week brought us the two-year anniversary edition of AEW Dynamite. And just take a moment and think about that for a second. Two years. They made it two years. That's pretty cool to think about. It really is. Hats off to everybody involved. And it's not easy. Others have tried and failed. And they've been successful. Here's to the next two years and hopefully many more. But with all that love fest out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about this show. Uh, from the beginning, you got a really weird start. For the opening eight-man tag that you've invested some TV time building up to, why would you do the entrances on social media? That's a curious, odd, and in my estimation, really dumb decision. This, this match featured three of your more over acts in your entire company. When you look at Brian Danielson, Adam Cole, and the Jurassic Express. And you're gonna say, well, what about the rest of the elite? I said, Brian Danielson, Adam Cole, and Jurassic Express, and I stand by that. Wouldn't you want your TV audience to hear the reaction from the fans for these entrances? Wouldn't you want to take that element that helps these performers, these wrestlers, feel like really big deals and show that to your television audience? You don't show it on TV so you could squeeze in more times for flips and botchy fucking spots? Of course, we're talking about AEW here, so a lot of their fans don't care about those you know, details that really matter. They focus on the flips that don't. Uh, but that's stupid. And also, how is a match great with multiple sloppy-ass botches? I mean, come on. This could have been so much more than what it was. At least Luchasaurus did not eat the pin this time. That, my friends, is progress. And we'll take it. We'll take it. Also, props to Daniel Bryan, Bryan Danielson, for once again making sure that he was in the segment that was positioned to be the most watched of the night. Hashtag Brian Danielson 2024. There is not a better politician in America today. There isn't. Anybody else you throw out there pales in comparison. You followed this up with the CM Punk promo. It's almost kind of falling into uh, segment two is a CM Punk segment. And this love and shit needs to cut out already. Did you really invest all of this money in CM Punk to not really have a plan for him? Other than, hey, we got CM Punk. We can ride months of nostalgia pops until we figure out what the hell to actually do with him. Seems like a really poor return on investment, in my opinion, especially not maximizing what you can get out of him. And is wrestling Daniel Garcia on Rampage really the best usage for him? Is it really, though? Is it really? Cheesecake, cheesesteak, whatever the fuck. That, yeah, like, this punk shit's getting boring really quickly. It's time to get him into an actual feud where you can actually do something with him. Because this crap every week's going to get real repetitive and is already getting dull. I did not know that, among as many other talents, that Armed Anderson is also a fire whisperer. And also able to apparently magically appear in Cody Rhodes' backyard. Um, just casually hanging out there. And, you know, totally believable that Cody was absolutely surprised that Armed Anderson was there with a the fire in his backyard. I mean, you know, why else would a guy be at home at night rocking a th damn near three-piece suit and wearing a lapel mic. I mean, of course, he was totally, completely surprised. And wearing the dress clothes to a bonfire in his own backyard is peak douchebaggery and perfectly suits Cody Rhodes. That works. Unfortunately, it sure seems like they're going down this redemption babyface angle, just being stubbornly stupid, like Matt Nagy refusing to get behind Justin Fields as the starter until he finally does levels of stupid. And believe me, folks, that's a level of numbskullery and fuckery you don't not want to be associated with. This is some founder-like heel shit. Nobody cares about your fucking redemption. You're not having to overcome any odds or obstacles. Like, this is fucking stupid. Stop fighting against it and go with it. Because you can be the top heel the company has, and the company needs you to be a top heel right now they don't need you to be this floundering founder fucking mid-card babyface that nobody likes. 
stupid. And next up, the TNT Championship. Bobby Fish versus Sammy Guevara. That's right, I said Bobby Fish. Did we really need to give an almost 45-year-old Bobby Fish this spot on this show, on this card? The fuck does he have to do with the first two years of AEW? Nothing. He should not be there. All the other talent that you have on your roster that you don't utilize or you have to manufacture ways to get them on TV because you have too much talent on your roster as it is and you want to add to that glut by putting somebody else there, I don't care if you sign with the company long term or not. This is fucking stupid. You could have found somebody else to have this spot and you should have. However, I am all here for Scorpio Sky potentially getting a shot at him. Let's go. Let's fucking go. And Dan Lambert, my God, he owned the mic. That Philly crowd hated him. Can we just make him AEW world champion already? At least you would have a guy that can get legit heat everywhere he goes. By speaking the truth. He can get the legit kind of heat that makes fans say, I want to pay money to see him get his ass beat. That's quality. That's a heel. A guy that embraces being hated which a lot of the wrestlers now are too insecure to actually want to do. They want to be light. They want to be cool. And they don't want to do the shit that can actually make the most money. This Lambert segment was great. You have Hager and Jericho make the save. Uh, the crowd seemingly cared more about the sing-along. Hey, let's party like it's 1999 ECW, for fuck's sakes, instead of worrying about what was actually done. Uh, Jericho playing off the mic going out was pretty good. Um, so you're setting up to a six-man tag next week. Cool. Whatever. Make Dan Lambert AEW world champion already, damn it. And then you've got the acclaimed talking about their match Friday against the Lucha Brothers, the tag champions. And something stood out to me on this. Other than the fact that this was a pre-tape, they want to make sure they could control what Max Caster says. I understand that, but is there a reason in AEW, or excuse me, all leg white wrestling, that almost every prominent wrestler that is black is heel? Think about that for a second. Is there a reason for that? Now, some of you are going to throw out there like a red velvet. Okay, that's one. It doesn't help your cause. You might throw out there like Top Flight or Lee Johnson. And yeah, what exactly the fuck have they done? I'm saying every prominent black wrestler in this company right now, it seems like is fucking heel. Jade Cargill, Nyla Rose, Will Hobbs, Ricky Starks, Scorpio Sky, the acclaimed private party. Certainly seems like you're putting Leo Rush into that category. I... Does anybody in AEW understand the optics of this? I mean, it might not be the most obvious to a lot of people. You probably have to be looking hard at it, but you should be looking at it. Like, there is a significant problem here with the representation in the presentation of how this company features their black wrestlers specifically. And if you can't see the problem, or if me saying that bothers you, which it certainly does for this fucking eggshell white audience that is AEW, then maybe you're part of the problem. You know, not, not every black person in AEW needs to be a fucking heel, Tony Khan, and you deserve to be shit on for this. Because that's stupid. And I'm still waiting for Tony Khan's big announcement because all we got an announcement of was the TBS title, which we know has been coming for weeks and is not a big announcement. Adding belts does not change how the women are featured. Especially when you look at this, did you just have to copy and paste the design, basically, of the TNT title and make the TBS title? No, fuck that shit. It's just stupid. Dumb. Darby Allen versus Nick Comoroto, the uh, sit-down interview with JR. Before this was pretty good, giving you a little insights into the background of Darby Allen's character. As I've said, like Darby Allen's not my jam, not a character that I particularly care for. But they do well by him. They do well with him. They give the fans reasons to care about him. Too often now with professional wrestling, you have fans that are more concerned with the what. Like, what are you doing? Or the how many flips and moves can you do? And they forget about the thing that matters the most, the thing that is the most important, the thing that helps the fans emotionally connect with the talent and the stories, and that is the why. The whys matter. The whys matter more than anything else. It is why all these crash test dummy matches on Dynamite and on Rampage and so forth are stupid. 
because more often than not, there is not really a why behind them. There is more of a how and a what. But somebody like a Darby Allen, this company has done a great job over the past two years of giving us the whys. And if you give us more whys with more of your wrestlers, your product will benefit greatly from it. Uh, but Darby Allen versus Nick Comoroto, speaking of somebody that should be in Jurassic Express, he's a fucking caveman! How can you not see this? QT Marshall trying to hit Sting with a diamond cutter. He ain't selling that shit, brother. I did notice, and I know I'm not the only one. <laughs> At one point afterwards, Sting went up to Darby Allen, and I could clearly see, clearly see, he was asking, you think CM Punk saw that? Bound for glory, fellas! Sting, you're not booked for the show. CM Punk, you're not booked for the show. Let's get together and make history. Sign on the line that is dotted, gentlemen. Everybody wants to see it. Those of you watching this are saying, everybody who? You, 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 all of you! You all want to see this. You know you do. And we need it. And we also know who the mastermind, the puppet master, of the attack on Darby Allen backstage was. Everybody's going to point to Inner Circle and they're going to point to, or not Inner Circle, excuse me, The Pinnacle. Fuck, why would I remember their name? They're hardly ever featured together on TV as a group anymore. But everybody's going to say it was The Pinnacle. It was that dastardly bastard MJF. Yeah, you play checkers. Sting plays chess. That laughter wasn't by accident. <laughs> the turn is beginning, folks. The turn is beginning. Joker Sting will make a return to professional wrestling. And I, for one, am here for it. I'm just a little upset that he wasn't the Joker in the casino ladder match at the end of the night. Got to give this young, hungry lion Sting his chance in the spotlight, in the shine, damn it. What better way to build up to him and CM Punk at Bound for Glory, brother, than to have him win that casino ladder match? Yeah. Dante Martin was out. He got some promo time. It's like, okay, to my point earlier about, you know, all the prominent black wrestlers in AEW are mostly heels. Uh, here, you're trying to feature Dante Martin a little more prominently, and then he immediately gets the shit rocked by Malachi Black. Okie dokie. <laughs> Akaro Shida versus Serena Deeb. Hey, if Akaro Shida wins, she'll be the first woman at AEW to win 50 matches. Serena Deeb, fuck the world! <laughs> fuck Shida. She got her shit rocked. She tapped out, and then Serena Deeb smashed her head upside... She smashed her upside the head with that damn trophy. It was glorious, and I loved every minute of it. So many other women on this roster that could get some run. You don't need it to continue to feature Hikaru Shida. That's stupid. So I love that finish. But this show is ultimately going to be about the main event. Like, another example of AEW using a gimmick. At some point in time, they're going to have to rein these in a little bit. But here, two-year anniversary show. No complaints about it whatsoever. Um, I do want to point out, though, with this casino ladder match, Brian Danielson ain't got time for that shit. And, and be, trust you, believe, one way or another, he's getting his title shot. You know it. I know it. We all know it. It's coming. You do not deny America's greatest politician. You just don't. Uh, but I think everybody was looking to this and saying, this is where Hangman Page is going to return. Hangman Page is going to win. He's going to finally get his title shot against Kenny Omega. And that's exactly what happened. The Hangman Page return was anticipated, and yet it was fucking fantastic. That pop alone is one of the biggest pops that AEW's had in his two-plus years history. Am I wrong? I mean, that pop was intense, it was loud, it was deep, it was emotional, you could feel it. Like, that was big time, big time TV shit. Even the little graphics saying, he finally showed up to work. I love when they do that sometimes on graphics. Um, but yeah, the return was fantastic, the reaction was great, the finish was perfect for their two years in AEW. Like, the fantastic main event. Once you got to Hangman Page, man, everything else was golden. Now I hope that they tell the rest of the talent to stop using the word shit so liberally. Not because of the fact of, well, that's a problem that they cuss. Like, they should be able to cuss. Like, it's so stupid. But when you look at him being back and how intensely the crowd chanted cowboy shit, cowboy shit, 
You want him to be the one that uses that phrase in that manner. And then maybe one heel uses it, maybe an MJF. Other than that, everybody else needs to find new profanities, new cuss words. You want Adam Page to hang out as much as you possibly can. You want Hangman and this cowboy shit thing to be the biggest thing that you got. Because he's that rare homegrown talent that's getting a featured main spot here. You have got to, got to throw everything you've got behind him. So that way, Brian Danielson could beat him later. Um, but as far as this week's show, there was a lot going on. Some questionable things that happened throughout, but some really notable, you know, really good for TV things too. That Lambert promo post-match was fantastic. Hangman Page's return and win like was marvelous. Like it worked so, so well. Um, those are really big highlights. If you're looking for things that you'll remember from a two-year anniversary show, those were it. So I enjoyed some of this week's show. I certainly did. And here's to more years of AEW Dynamite.